slightly but I don't think it's very good. And nothing in there is dangerous, nothing.
Yes. What did you just say? Yeah, this is my fault. By the time the camera's got to that point, all is gone. It's gone, And But the body is going through. This process of working much more closely with the creator of this universe um, and the, the person whose work inspired all of us as we made those movies, um, it was marvellous being close to that sort of font of creativity and imagination and energy. And that's what was particularly interesting and exciting, that it was working with Joe developing the screenplay, shaping the screenplay and getting it to the point we got it to before we started shooting. News Commander has been travelling the world with a suitcase and collecting rare, endangered, beautiful, exotic, highly dangerous beasts. Um, he studies them. He wants to make sure that they don't become extinct and he keeps them all in his case. And he turns up in New York with this case, and unfortunately, some of them get out. Um, and Newt is unique in the sense that he is um, one of the very few, if the only wizard, who believes that these creatures have a place in the wizarding world, and they should be valued and cherished and appreciated. And everybody else thinks he's nuts. Inevitably, you start with a really broad list. And then as you start to kind of imagine the character and sort of live with him for a little bit, the list kept getting shorter, 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 shorter. And it all kind of led to Eddie, basically. Um, I, would, I would say what he has in spades is this soul. He has a real soulfulness as an actor. And I, I love the idea of Eddie doing funny stuff, because he'd done all this lovely serious stuff. And I wanted to make sure he could be funny, and he can be funny. Um, so once we got Eddie, it was just about fitting the world around him. We asked, would you come to New York with us, and would you spend a weekend in a hotel room meeting lots of other actors who are all going to be up for these different roles, Jacob, Queenie, Tina. And would you mind just doing scenes with them? Because for me, it was about the chemistry of putting the right person with Eddie. And he was so sweet. He spent 48 hours in a hotel room doing the same scene, say, with Jacob, with five different actors over a period of, you know, 10 hours. And he was extraordinary. And out of that, we were able to clearly see who was right for Jacob, who was right for Queenie, because what defined whether or not they were right, which actor was right, was not just their skill as an actor, but how, how the chemical reaction was with Eddie, how that partnership, how that chemistry worked. I have a very calm, very methodical way of working. I know exactly what I want to try and achieve. I know what I feel and I always have to be true to that. So that's what I try and realise when I direct. And in the things that I, I develop, 
moment to moment in the script and in the in the movie as we make it. And I have a very quiet, measured way of dealing with actors. I'm always trying to pull the best out of them. It was a textbook that Harry Potter used at school. During the writing of that textbook, I became quite interested in the ostensible author, Newt Scamander. And of all the characters in Potter who were just a name, he was the one who took on quite a bit of life in my mind. Newt's been travelling the world studying magical creatures. His ambition is he, he, he wants to write the book, he wants to write Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. He wants people to understand how remarkable these creatures are and he wants to educate the public and stop them killing them. A very laudable design, one would say. But Newt being Newt, he can't resist if he finds something that's injured or endangered taking it with him. So over time, this case has become effectively a, a portable animal hospital slash safari park for endangered species. If you haven't got tension, if you haven't got conflict, you haven't got a story. Newt's in an alien environment on so many levels. It's America and he's British. He doesn't really understand how the magical world works here and he accidentally opens a case full of magical creatures in the middle of New York in arguably the most hostile place he could have done this. It's, you know, so he's, he's blundered hugely and he's walked into a situation that he doesn't understand at all. Something that has implications for the whole wizarding world. Something he gets caught up in. So uh, all of that's massive fun to write. You start with four pretty ill-assorted people with very different agendas. Newt simply wants to get his creatures back in that case and get out of there. Tina is involved in something bigger, but she's a demoted aura, so she shouldn't really be messing around with these things, and yet is compelled to. Queenie is a sweetheart who is in many ways the glue of the group. She just, she doesn't, she's a nice person. And uh, then you've got Jacob, who increasingly is fascinated by what's happening and wants to stick with them. But it is the friendship that develops between the four of them that is the most important thing in the movie. I was thrilled David Yates wanted to do it. He's just the nicest man who ever walked the earth. He's great. He understands the world and the material so well. We've always got on so well and, and we worked together, I think, really well. And David Heyman, you know, he was there right from the beginning. He was right from the beginning. Uh, I, we go back such a long way. It was, um, I couldn't really imagine doing it without him. Newt is a, 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 an eccentric. Um, he's an outsider who's been traveling the world in search of these remarkable creatures and he and he communicates better with these beasts than he does with people. Eddie is brilliant at playing e eccentrics. I mean you look at what the work he did um, with you know in th you know, theory of everything um, and and also in the Danish girl and he is able to get under those characters skins and it's very important that we have that with Newt. He's very funny He's absolutely committed. He's classically British, and he fits perfectly in 1926. Uh, Eddie is a character for all times, and uh, as an actor for all times, and, a char and can play a character of any time. And uh, I think we're really, really lucky to have him. There's such a rich thematic under underlay to you know, um, the, the themes that many of the themes that interested her in uh, the Potter books are still in evidence here you know the uh, outsiders um, tolerance or intolerance fundamentalism um, and, 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 and and people 
outsiders coming together to fight uh, injustice. David is someone who uh, I, I, I admire him hugely as a director. He brings a kinetic quality to his direction, but at the same time is willing to let moments linger um, in order to express a given moment or a, a given idea. He is forever searching for truth, and I think that it helps elevate um, everything that he works on, that, that the performance and actually the story by, in, 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 by, by always pushing for that authenticity. He's a great collaborator. He has a very strong opinion of his own, but is willing to listen and share and, 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 and process the ideas of others. And ultimately, he makes a choice that is you know, pretty much always the best choice. Stuart brings, um, grounds everything in reality, and it goes back again to what Jo, I think, has done in her books and has done in the script, and David is always searching for in, 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 in directing the film of his, The Last Four Potters and, and, and this first fantastic piece. He's looking for truth and authenticity. Stuart is all about grounding even the most magical of designs in an architectural and um, in, in a reality. So in, at the beginning we see some newspapers that, that suggest that Grindelwald is, is causing chaos. Grindelwald is a wizard who is intolerant of non-wizarding people. He believes that wizards should come out of hiding and really rule the world. She has the most extraordinary imagination. And I don't think anybody other than the creator of that world would dare to take the license, the creative license is necessary to push the boundaries, to give you something new, to give you something fresh, to give you a familiar world, but new ideas. He's just a wonderful person and a brilliant director, and uh, Stuart, of course, and so many of the team, like Tim, Tim Burke, and, and many, many other people. Uh, it's wonderful to be back again. You know, and I think none of us thought we would be at the end of this, and here we are back at Leavesden, which has been completely newly revamped, uh, you know, which is, again, sort of the product of our work. So we're very proud of that. And uh, now we're back again, um, having another chance to do another one. Our understanding of, of the human condition and the way she communicates it, uh, the way she communicates the very profound ideas and themes in a way that's very, very accessible to everyone and very entertaining. And I think that the mix of that is, is a very, very rare thing. It's certainly something that I try to achieve in everything that I do and write and produce. And uh, she does it better than anybody, really. Hello, it's Valerie here. For all you Harry Potter fans, did you know that Daniel Radcliffe went through 160 pairs of prop glasses filming the series? Yeah, I swear. For this and more movie facts, click on more videos.